Hello and welcome back to another YouTube video here at Pragmatic Works. My name is Mitchell Pearson and have you ever wondered why is my report especially in development going so slow? You're working in the Power Query Editor and every click just takes forever and you can't really get anything to go any faster than what it's doing and you want to know how to make that a little bit faster especially for development? Well stay tuned. So one of the things I see a lot of times when I'm helping customers out doing one on one kind of virtual mentoring is we're trying to solve a problem. We're cleaning and transforming the data, getting the data model ready, or we're even gotten to the point where we're writing some DAX and the customer just has a load of data, tons and tons of data. And everything that we do just takes a really long time. And one of the things I learned a long time ago, because I worked as a consultant for a long time with you know, SQL Server technologies, writing SQL, building databases, is when we work as BI developers, we really work with a portion of the data. We don't work with all the data. So the best tip that I can give you is that if you're working with a ton of data, millions of rows in Power BI, and it's really just slogging along because maybe your laptop doesn't have enough memory, maybe you're running too many applications on your laptop, or maybe it's just too, too much data, is limit the amount of data that you're working with. Now, Mitchell, how can I do that? How can I limit the amount of data? Well, there's a couple of different ways to do that. If you're pulling from like an Excel file, one of my customers recently was working from an Excel file that had just tons of records in it. Um, it might've been a CSV file because it was more than a million, if I remember correctly. I had them just duplicate that file, create a development version of the file, and just drastically reduce the number of transactions to maybe just the last month of data. Then we pointed our source to the test file temporarily so we could clean it up and do all the stuff we needed to do. And then before publishing it to the service, we could point it back to the production Excel file, right? If you're pointing to a database, well, that can be a little bit easier. So let's take a look at this real quick in the Power Query Editor. What I've done is I've just pulled in a bunch of sample tables from an Azure SQL database that I have. And I'm going to transform data here. Now, I do want to talk about parameters because parameters are absolutely important in this process. So I'm going to bring them up. I'm going to briefly mention them and I'm going to kind of show you how you could set this up with parameters. But what I got here is, or what I have, is you would not generally limit the number of rows on your dimensions, right? So I have these dimensions here and I don't want to reduce the number of rows in my dimensions. If you do that, then your reports start to look really weird and you have blanks all over the place because they don't match. What you normally want to reduce when you're limiting the number of rows in your data is the transaction tables, because guess what? Your fact tables, your transaction tables, those are the ones with millions of rows. Those are the ones with just tons and tons of records. So reduce that, leave your dimensions intact. So from a development perspective, I don't generally touch those dimensions unless it's getting rid of a bunch of, let's say you had, you know, 200,000 customers in your database, but only 5,000 were actually paid customers that you care about. Then yeah, sure, you can limit that. But other than a situation like that, I probably wouldn't worry about touching my dimensions. However, the facts, that's where it's at. So what I would do is I'd come into like my reseller sales table and I'd say, look, I only want the data for the last year, right? If I'm pulling in 10 years, only bring in the last year or only bring in maybe the last three months of data. First of all, what I want to show you is something you already know about, I'm sure, query folding. So if I right click, because this is a database, you'll notice that I can view native query. This is awesome because what that means is that anything that I'm doing up to this point, is actually being query folded, which what that means is it's pushing the work back to the server and it's doing the work on the server. The server is much more performant than doing the work inside of the Power Query Editor inside of my laptop, right? So it does it there before it pulls the data across the network. So if I'm reducing the size of my data set, I wanna make sure I do it while I'm still getting query folding. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So first of all, how do you reduce this data set? Let's say I don't even remember reseller sales, but internet sales I know has 60,000. Let's pretend like it's 60 million. How do I get this down to only a million records or 50,000 records? 
Well, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to look at one of my filters like date. Date is usually one you want to filter on. And I'm going to tell it, you know what, I want to add a filter here. And I'm going to add a filter where the order date key is, let's say, greater than or equal to, right? And I'm going to do something like, and I think this data goes up to um, 2010. So I'm going to do 2010 0101. Obviously, if you're working with more recent data, this is easy. You just grab the last month of data. So I'm going to do that. Now I'm hard coding a value that I'm going to have to manually change later, close and apply, and then publish. However, you can also use parameters here. I'm going to talk about that in just a moment, but we're going to do this. So then I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and this is going to limit my result set. Now, if you are working inside of the Power Query Editor, and you've got a ton of tables in here, and you're doing a lot of merges and joining tables together and building a lot of logic. This is where I see customers get utterly frustrated. So getting this query folding to work, reducing the size of your data that's coming in will make a drastic difference when you're working inside of the Power Query Editor. So this is important, this step right here. And this will solve a lot of your problems. Now, I want to also repeat this process for fact reseller sales. The, again, the problem with what I'm doing here, when I'm going in here and saying, you know, I'm manually putting this in, it's a static value, it's 2010101, so I'm only getting the data that's greater than or equal to later than 2010, is it's a hard-coded value that I will have to come back in and change later, right? So I can come back over here, you can always come back in and click that settings wheel. Well, Mitchell, you said there's a more efficient way of filtering. There is. If I'm developing, I really want to develop with a small subset of data so I can get all my development done. I'm not sitting there waiting for things to spin. I'm not waiting for the data to load every time I load the data for 10 minutes. But then when I'm finally done and I want to publish this out to the Power BI service, when do I choose to change those values back? Well, if you've built parameters in your data model, you can just use parameters. And once you publish it and you set up the schedule refresh, if you've ever set up a schedule refresh, there's a bunch of little options there, and one of them is parameters. And you can go in there, and if you have parameters that you've built into your report, you can change it there. It's a really cool feature if you've never used it. So I'm going to show you how to set up a parameter right here on our filter so it's no longer a hard-coded value inside of the report, but it's a value that we can change from outside the report, right? So here's how you do it. Up here at the top, I can go to Manage Parameters, and I can click New Parameter. Now, if I remember correctly, it's been a long time, but I think manage parameters might be something that you have to enable the ability to edit parameters. You might have to edit this option or enable this option from the Power BI options in Power BI desktop. So if you don't see this or you're not able to get to this, that might be the case. So keep that in mind, but I'm going to call this my integer. It's going to be an integer data type um, order date filter. And then I'll change my data type down here to a lot of times I don't change the data type. It seems to work fine. So I'll leave it with any. And then I'm just going to tell it the current value is going to be 2010-0101, January 1st of 2010. So instead of hard coding the value into the filter that we had up here, so it will create this new little object. Instead of hard coding it into the order date key, what I can do, let me show you this is instead of doing that, I can say use a parameter instead. And then it's going to notice that that's the only parameter I currently have. So it's going to take the value of that parameter. Now I'm going to use that same parameter in my other table. So this was fact reseller sales, right? Click OK, zoom out, go over to fact internet sales, click filter again. And we're also going to update this. What's cool about this is that if you use this parameter in 10 different places, you can change it one time and it changes all 10. Now, you don't have to change it from inside the report though. So once you're done with this, you can now, your report's gonna work a lot faster. Just going through the steps in the Power Query Editor is gonna be so much faster as you're appending and merging and going between different tables and cleaning stuff up. When you hit close and apply, it's gonna load drastically faster. The other thing that's worth looking at here is notice that I can still, oh, I'm kind of blocking it with my head. Let's try that again. Notice that I can still when I right click on it, I can still view native query. 
That means query folding is happening. So it is applying a filter, but it's applying the filter all the way back on the server, which is much more powerful than my laptop. Then it's only pulling the data across the network that I need. So this is awesome. And this only works with certain um, data sources. Obviously, Azure SQL database or a regular SQL database is going to work with this. Um, but this is a really cool feature. So this is drastically going to improve my performance. And it, it's, it's very common that when I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one virtual mentoring session with a customer, I'm like, hey, we need to filter this data down. So, you know, we only got 30 minutes together. We only got an hour together. I want to make sure we solve your problem. We, we don't want to stand here and sit here and wait for 30 minutes. Once you publish this report, because we've got parameters on here, which you can always come and just manage the parameter. So you can always come back in, manage the parameter and change the value here. But once you publish it, you can change it in the service too, which is really awesome. And that's really cool. All right. Well, this was a quicker video, but this is one that every time I show this to a customer or sometimes even, you know, somebody who in general is working with Power BI, they're like, man, this is such a great tip. This is going to save me so much time. So I thought I would share it with you. I hope you enjoyed it. And of course, we'll see you in the next one.